We present these favorite target of 12, 1230 patch notes. There will be a wipe with the patch. Uh, new additions. Expanded the lighthouse location. Added the ability to visit. We added the ability uh, to visit the island where the lighthouse is located. And also added new interiors inside the water treatment plant facility complex. Added three new bosses. The commander of the ex USEC PMC group known as Rogues. The leader of the gang is not. He coordinates the actions of the entire group and specializes in assault operations. Bird Eye maintains the distance between him and the enemy, setting up ambushes and choosing positions with a clear line of sight to the area. Big Pop prefers, uh, prefers the grenade launcher and serves the role of massive firepower in battle and always rushes towards an enemy to reach combat distances. Uh, bosses maintain contact with each other and with the other rogues. However, they don't stick together in style, in, sorry, and instead... Keep their position, positioning distances. When an enemy is detected by any of the bosses or rogues, information on enemy location is transmitted to everyone by radio. The bosses prepare for battle, taking up tactical positions for engagement. Which I assume means when you fight someone, you're at, like they're all going to fucking engage you, but obviously moving to their position. Bosses help each other using all available weapons and are hostile to everyone, players of any faction, scavs and raiders. They don't communicate with the rest of the bosses and fence, but they attack any en enemy immediately. Killing them does not affect players' reputation. So scavs can kill them. Scavs can kill them. Uh, the boss's habitats are lighthouse, sh shoreline, woods, and customs. That's cool as fuck. They do not stay in one place and instead wander through these locations all the time. If the bosses have moved to one of the maps, they will uh, be absent on the others. There is a no timetable for their movements and no one knows what the bosses are guided by when changing their location. Added offline cooperative game mode. This game mode is only available to players who have purchased Edge of Darkness pre-order edition. The added co-op mode checkbox on the game mode selection screen in co-op mode, all settings for bots, bosses, time and weather are identical to online raids. Progress in co-op mode raids uh, is not saved and the gear taken into raids, such raids won't be lost upon death. So you can go do your own you know, little little games and teach people where to play and, and what things are and, and stuff, which is really cool for a teaching method, but also from a content creation, we can make our own videos based off this stuff as well. The start as group checkbox allows all players in the group to spawn together in the center of the location with the checkbox unticked. All players will spawn like in online mode. So that's pretty cool too. Um, so you can have your own little tournaments based off it too. The number of players in a group for co-op mode has been increased and depending on the maximum number of players in the selected location. So for example, you know, uh, I think Shoreline's 12 players. So you could go into Shoreline potentially with 12, whereas, I don't know, Factory, you'd have six. Uh, the number of co-op servers may be limited under heavy loads. In this case, on the group gathering screen, you may see a message saying, attention, high load on practice mode servers. This message means that finding a server for co-op raid may take longer than usual. At least they're giving a warning for it. Rework of the movement animations. The updated, uh, updated the animations for character uh, movement and jumps and stances added new breathing animations, melee attack animations, weapon drawing, holstering. We've seen videos of this already. Uh, added sprint animation that changed weapons. Added sprint animation that changed depending on weapon type, rifle, pistol, melee, grenade, and its length. So, like, sometimes they'll, like, have the rifle under one arm or the pistol, carrying the pistol with one hand. Instead of, like, at the moment, it, it, they kind of do, like, a, does, like, a swing using two hands. Added rotation and tilts of the body when moving and sprinting. The lower the speed, the positioning of the player, the lower the, the tilt of the body during turns and vice versa. I wonder if that means there's going to be like more deliberate head bobbing. Implemented weapon operations during the sprint, in particular the ability to switch to another weapon, switch fire modes, check the magazine chamber, folding and unfolding inspection and reloading. Also, they actually do the animation while sprinting in that. That's cool. Fixed third we uh, person weapon twisting while prone when laying on the side. Okay. That's when you like lay on the ground, you go on the side. It doesn't look like you're all twisted up. Out of the daily tasks for player scabs, the tasks will be given out by fence once a day and will be available after building intelligence center in the hideout, regardless of the PMC character level. Out of the new type of daily task, searching for items and from a category such as food, medicine, weapons, etc., all items will need to be found in one raid. Found in one raid. Okay. Uh, added slots for special items in PMC inventory in which you can put a compass and rangefinder, a Wi-Fi camera, a marker, and other special items. Items in special slots will not be lost upon death. They also cannot be looted from, from bodies. To activate an item from a spe special slot, you need to assign a key on quick access panel. Fair enough. I, th I think that's really cool. Being able to carry a range finder is going to make sniping so much more enjoyable. Um, did it say the markers as well, did it? Uh, a marker. Yeah, so you can put at least one marker on in, in your... It's pretty much like up your bum. Out of the flare gun and single shot re reactive flare rounds with... 
lighting and flare ammo. Shooting red signal flares will call in a plane with a airdrop to fly to the nearest possible location. Sweet. Updated the airdrop mechanic. Added four types of containers with unique contents, weapons, medicine, supplies, and general purpose. Added countermeasure flares when flying in and dropping the container. Updated the plane flying trajectories and decreases the engine sound volume. I liked it loud. I always liked the idea that the fact that I knew the plane was there, you know, like never was mistaken once that what was that noise. Now, I, I, I don't know. Uh, added tasks for the new lighthouse territory. Sweet. Added the base clothing models for USEC and Bear PMC. So they sorry, updated. So the, the USEC was kind of a little bit bright green. Um, so I'm hoping they made it that with a little bit more camouflage. You don't stand out as much. But well, we'll have to wait and see. But USEC and Bear have both got, had a, a rehaul of their initial, initial uh, clothing. Added new weapons and customization for them. Uh, the Benelli M3 Super 90 shotgun. The AXMC sniper rifle, which I'm pretty sure is the 338 sniper. Accuracy International AXMC. I'm pretty sure it's the 338 bolt action. MP18 single shot rifle, which is that um, break action single shot. RD704 assault rifle. I've got no idea what that one is. It's, it looks like an AK, I think. The SAG AK carbine, the AKG36, and the MGL M32A1 revolver grenade launcher. I was really hoping for the style. Not gonna lie, was hoping for the style. Maybe, maybe, maybe in a, a, an interim patch. Reworking the animations to the MP133 and MP9. Uh, added a new model animation from the uh, modification to the SV98. Added new equipment and items. Changed the bonus for the perception skill. Now the hearing radius increased by 0.3% per level, up until 15% for the max level. Before this change, the hearing increased by 0.7% and up to 35%. I would just prefer him to fuck that off completely, but sure, all right. At, at least it's more even. At least it's more even. But personally, I just don't think it's it's really something that should be in the game at all. Uh, changing the inertia speed and force when leaning. Okay. Added new outfits for both PMC factions. I believe there's two per faction. Uh, added new crafting recipes for the hideout. Sweet. That's always welcome, particularly for people that play hardcore. I'll be starting my hardcore in the first week of this wipe. So um, it'd be nice to have them. Rework the elite metabolism skill effect. Now with zero hydration and energy, you will not receive any thirst and hunger damage, but still receive other negative effects. Before this change, there was no negative effects at all. Yeah, that's fair. All right, let's see this one. Rework the elite strength skill effect. Now weapons equipped on sling on back and holster become weightless. All other equipment and item weight in chest rigs, uh, backpack pouches and secured container is counted normally. Before this change, all equipment and weapons were weightless. Big dub. In my opinion, Elite Strength was so OP. So now it's just your weapons. Your weapons will not count as weight. So if you've got like the Ash 12, it'll be like, it will weigh nothing. But you won't be able to wear like an SB, sorry, a, a 6B43 armor and just be like this super mega tank and not even feel the weight of it. So I think that's a, that's a big one. Graphical improvements, are FSR, uh, an image scaling technology in modern 3D games that allows you to increase performance with minimal loss to the quality of the final image. FSR, is analog of the DLSS uh, technology and supported by all AMD graphics cards from the RX 400 series and newer, as well as NVIDIA 1000 series cards and newer. It's gonna be big for a lot of people. A lot of people struggling with frames. FSR option is only available for full HD resolutions, 1080p and higher performance mode is only available for 4K resolutions. Temporarily disable the ability to enable MIP streaming in the graphics settings. We're currently reworking this function and we'll re-enable it. I, I never understood what MIP streaming did. I, I tested around with it and never really understood it. So, updated the NVIDIA Reflex version. Cool. Uh, reworked the laser sights of all the tactical devices. The IR mode enabled. The laser flashlight flashlights will not be visible since they are designed for use with NVG. Also, the intensity, the brightness, and standard non-IR lasers have been increased. Sweet. So this means like when you're going to be using your NVGs, it's going to, you're actually going to see it. It's just going to be awesome. So for people that don't know, when you're using an NVG, it consumes all the light that's in the room. So there's, there's some lights that we can't see with our actual naked eye, um, which is like infrared lights. So when, uh, you, say you were in a, a pitch black room, there's no ambient light at all, and you put on an NVG, technically the NVG won't work well. It'll be very, very, I'll use the word hazy. Then, NVGs usually come on with a uh, IR light. You, tick on, you click on the IR light and then it will illuminate the room like it's a torch. But anyone that's not using an NVG won't see anything. But this is what IR mode is. Um, so when, 
eventually I would really hope that they make it that you can't aim down sights with uh, MVGs and then people will be able to actually patrol like normal with lasers on their guns with IR lasers and then they'll be shooting from the hip but it'll look fucking sick it'll be fun the fights will be awesome if it, if it goes down that path unless obviously an MVG uh and a, and a sight is supported to be used with an MVG and or made for it you know what I mean but um that's where I hope they take the direction of that so you can't just run any sight you want with the night vision and this, that will make this kind of stuff really sick and immersive. All right, for sounds, added new voices for Bear and Yusek. Uh, I believe the voice lines for Bear included a broken English vo uh, voice voice line. Added new sounds of movement on top of various surface types. Cool. We'll see what that's like. The sounds for weapons dropping on various surfaces. So now if you put a, if you press like the discard button, drop the weapon on the ground, you'll actually hear it hit the ground. Uh, Added sounds for weapon, yeah. Uh, added sounds of bodies collapsing after death and sounds of tr transition to prone. Okay. The sound of transition to prone is already loud as fun. For, okay, there's only 37 fixes. So let's skim them. The sound effect of active hearing no longer persists between offline raids. Added the perk in icon for the hand stamina to the endurance skill. Added a perk icon, okay. Uh, coldest knife charge value no longer resets to max if the knife is picked up from a killed player. Fixed display of price with five or more characters for items that take one to two space cells. Fixed display of price. Oh, okay, cool. So you can actually see the price properly. Added sorting table button to mail and task reward screens. Nice. That's cool. Uh, the trajectory of the AGS projectile no longer changes when scoped is moved. Cool. Metal bars on the lab location no longer reduce the damage when shooting through them. That's like, you know, when there's those doorways in labs and there's like those, it's like a mesh mesh wall next to it and you go to shoot through it and you can't shoot through it but the raider shoots you one bullet in the head now you can shoot through them that's what i'm pretty sure it means by the metal bars fixed incorrect behaviors of bodies after death in some specific places um on the lighthouse location cool next button is no longer dis disappeared if you return to the faction selection screen from the head model and voice selection screen that sucks <laughs> what how many people got stuck on that and had to restart MS2000 marker no longer floats in the air after placing it. Oh. Fixed incorrect behavior of the setting interface when switching from full screen mode to borderless mode. Right. Uh, fixed incorrect window size of 1080p and windowed version. Helmet mounted flashlights no longer blocks the vision when using stationary weapons. How about we be, get the button to be able to uh, turn on and off our hel helmet mounted flashlight? Because at the moment we can't. Picking up an item while prone no longer causes incorrect camera movement. Okay. Adjusted the aiming accuracy of the TOS. TOS is always... Oh, it's the KS-23. What? They just buffed the KS-23. Fix a bug that caused rogues to visually appear incorrectly behind stationary weapons. Righto. Sort direction indicator no longer changes its position if the player re-enters the flea market screen. Okay. Yeah, cool. Uh, FN scar, blah, blah, blah. 20 round mag now increases the weapon size by one slot down. Really? That means it's a three. Does that make it three down? That's huge. The air filter's been fixed for ages, chat. When changing the menu background while in the hideout, the hideout image is no longer overlapped by the menu background. Fix the high con trooper TFO icon for the low graphics setting. Uh, fix the incorrect icon anti aliasing for big items in the stash. Fix the bug where the character. Sorry, fix a bug that caused the character texture to become distorted. And loading into a raid. Fix incorrect patrol path the route for Tequila on Nighttime Factory. Fix the lack of wet asphalt effect on the SSR enabled in some places lighthouse. Added inertia when quick tapping the AD keys. Oh man. So if you were to press D and then let go of the D key and then press A, you would instantly go back and forth. But now it's going to do that weird wide step thing. That's going to be kind of, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, fixed bot behaviors when shooting revolvers. Weapon stat penalties from ammo are now displayed correctly for revolvers. Fixed incorrect behavior of Tegula when changing position during combat. That's probably your fault. It's fucking broken anyway, that AD thing. Killer is no longer hostile to player scabs with reputation above six. Thank you. Fixed display of weapons in the folded and unfolded state in the stash. Cool. Fixed the possibility of bot hands getting frozen. Rogues are now aggressive again towards USEC players who kill them in the past raids. Yeah, that, that's, that was why USEC was so OP. Uh, fix the number of issues related to this calculation of inertia, allowing players to bypass or reduce it. 
fixed an error that caused the disappearance of ammo loaded into magazines during a raid after finishing the raid. Yeah, so what would happen if you remove the ammo from the ra from the magazine, toss the magazine, then left the raid, the ammo would disappear. So that's been fixed. Fixed blocking of inventory operations that, cause, that could occur after selecting a weapon picked up by a killed scav. Fixed a bug to which the container from the airdrop froze in the air or ended up in places inaccessible inaccessible by players. Fair enough. Fixed an overly bright lighting to, of characters when loading into a location. Cool. Well, fair enough. So a few things. Um, it is what it is. There's a, there's a heap of cool stuff. I don't like. I'm gonna be completely honest. I think the patch will be exciting, but I really hope they have a patch planned for like two or three months in. I'm gonna be completely honest. Whilst this stuff is really cool, I don't see it being the stuff that's gonna keep people going like for six months straight. So arena, I know they're coming in at some point, um, and oh, it's gonna go into the private test servers and then um, streets hopefully by the end of the year. But it's. Some new guns, a lighthouse expansion, some new scav bosses, and offline co-op. So it's it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I'm excited. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it goes. Um, as for this though, that is it for uh, this YouTube video. If you like this video, make sure you like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. I'm going to track this up uh, on, the, on the YouTube channel for people to get their, their rundown of the patch notes. Um, make sure you come to the live stream, win yourself a computer. We're giving away 17 computers over the next seven days. And um, appreciate all the support you guys give. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do. Check out the other YouTube channels. And on the 1st of July, the launching of the IRL content on the main channel, which is going to be super hype. Um, and yeah, check out all the other YouTube channels I've got. The Pestoy TV for uh, the race series, hardcore series, and also some highlights. And then we also have the Clips channel for little clip moments and the VODs if you miss any of the live stream. All right. Well, lastly, guys, I'll see you next one.